This happened to me back in 2013. I was on a road trip back from seeing my girlfriend in Florida. I was in Tennessee, right outside of Clarksville, as a matter of fact, on the 48. Right when my front right tire blew and I had to pull over to the side of the road. I was in Tennessee, right outside of Clarksville, as a matter of fact, on the 48. That's when my front right tire blew and I had to pull over on the side of the road. This happened at about midnight, so there wasn't really a whole lot going on traffic-wise. I quickly put my emergency lights on, got out of the car, and got the donut tire out of the back, and began to change my tire. Out here, there isn't a crazy amount of thick woods and brush. It's pretty open, but there is some occasional brush and thicket on the side of the road. There are trees and forest, but it's back a little ways from the road. However, with it being midnight, it was fairly dark, and it was a cloudy night. I'm sitting there, changing my tire, and I just take off the popped one. Of course, out of all the spots on the road to have this out, I just happened to pull over right next to a really large area of brush. Well, as I'm getting the next tire ready to be put on, I hear some rustling in the brush not even 10 feet from behind me. Thinking it was a person trying to sneak up on me, maybe to rob me, or lord knows what, but I just said out loud, I hear you, I know you're there. As soon as I said that, out pops this 10 foot tall behemoth of a wolf creature holding a dead deer in its arms with blood all over its muzzle. I literally froze with the tire iron in my hand and bolts in the other. This thing was pure evil and it was literally the most hulking biggest thing I've ever seen. I've never seen something just so massive and thick. It's kind of like if you took a bodybuilder and gave him steroids times 100 and then stuck a massive wolf head with glowing yellow eyes and gave it huge fangs. This thing didn't seem irritated. It just looked at me and stared at me for a moment before looking off in the distance and bolting faster than I could even see it move. When it bolted, I didn't even really get to see where it went. It was so fast. It was like a blur. I couldn't even believe my eyes. You damn well bet I got that tire on as fast as I could before getting the hell out of there. As soon as I got the tire back on and everything was secure, I jumped back in the car and I floored it, man. I don't know what it was. I don't care what it was. All I know is that I didn't want it around me. Me and my buddies live in Missouri, and we like to go four-wheeling from time to time down old logging roads and find the best spots to just jet off out into the woods. We've been doing this for years, and I've always had such a blast. But very recently, we've had a different experience. Me, my buddy Travis, and my other buddy John all hopped in his truck with our trailer with our four-wheelers on it, and we drove out uh, about an hour or so in the woods away from his property. There's a lot of really old logging roads that haven't been used in God knows how long, just around the area he's at. We usually just pick one and go down until we find a good spot to pull off, park, and get our ATVs going. We go down a different dirt road that we usually go down, but there are several to explore, so we thought, hey, let's go pick a new one today. The woods are pretty quiet out this way, I thought. Something I didn't really pay attention to much before, but I just felt kind of uneasy. I wasn't going to mention that to my friends since everything else seemed pretty normal and we were all laughing and joking. We ended up parking and pulling right in the middle of the road, and Travis said, all right, Let's load up. We all got out of the truck and got the four-wheelers all set up and ready. Got our gear on and our GoPros and our helmets and we're all good to go. Travis went first and I followed after it with my friend and John following behind me. We went for quite a ways. I want to say at least a mile or two and just traversing through the forest. At some point or another, Travis went ahead of me and me and John kind of just stayed behind. I think Travis was really wanting to explore, so he kind of went off and we usually just wait around a little bit for him to come back. 
but it wasn't even a couple minutes later and he comes flying back faster than I have ever seen him ride on that son of a bitch. What was weird is as he was flying back toward us, he was motioning us frantically for us to follow and hurry. John and I exchanged confused glances as he passed by and we start to hear this heavy thudding. It sounded like a moose the size of an elephant crashing through the woods, running toward us, chasing us. John and I both look over and a ways away, we can see this giant werewolf creature running toward us, smashing through the trees and toppling over brush. This thing was a bulldozer, literally. John and I, without hesitation, flew out of there and pray to God Almighty we knew our way back. We had done so far and I actually kind of lost my sense of direction. So I was mainly following the trails and Travis who had already flown off past us. This thing was hot on our tail and it was maybe 20 to 25 feet behind us at all times. It stayed that way for about the last mile and as soon as we got out of the wood line, we literally ditched the ATVs right on the road and jumped in the truck and drove off as fast as we could. We didn't see the wolf creature come out of the wood line. I thought it was really weird that it actually never caught up to us. It's almost like it wasn't fully trying and was just wanting to scare us out of the area. Maybe we stumbled into its territory. I'm not too sure myself. We felt like shit though for leaving the ATVs. So the next morning we got up and drove back there and sure enough, they were all still there, just fine. We definitely avoid that logging road from now on, and that whole area. We stay far away from it. This is hard for me to talk about. I miss my dad very much, and this happened almost a year before he passed away. It was July 4th, 2008. My dad ended up passing away in a bad car accident that following winter when he hit black ice and went off the road and ended up hitting a tree. My father was an amazing man and he always took care of us kids. Him and my mom's relationship though was rather rocky and it wasn't until we were almost 17 and 18 did they divorce. My dad ended up getting a nice piece of property out in the country a ways out of town. He had a lot of woods on the back side of his property that we had wanted to explore and he would always tell us it wasn't safe and to stay away. He would really stress that we were not to go back there. We always thought this was weird because my dad never acted this way about anything. So we just respected his wishes and never went to the back side of the property. I always just assumed he had stumbled upon a bunch of rattlesnake nests or something. I didn't question him. I had a lot of respect for my dad. Okay, anyway, moving on. Fast forward to July 4th, 2008. My mom wasn't doing anything and she encouraged us to go spend the holiday with her father. Have a nice little barbecue, shoot the shit, and light off a bunch of fireworks, right? Well, me and my brother, who at this point are in our early 20s, go over there and we have a blast with my dad. My dad makes amazing food and he smoked so much great meat and we ate so much food. My dad used to be a chef, so he knew his way around spices and taste. We were enjoying the evening when it started to get a little dark and my father proclaimed it was time to bust out the fireworks. We weren't just playing around with sparklers or crap like that. My dad busted out the big illegal fireworks. He enjoys getting them every year and really putting on a show just for us. We began the fireworks and it was wonderful. I remember maybe 30 minutes into the fireworks, I had to piss really bad. I enjoy pissing outside more than I do in the house, so I thought, what the hell? And I walked my butt near the back side of the property to pee since it wasn't too far away. Closer to us than the house was anyway. I told my dad and my brother I was gonna go back here to go pee, and my dad just shouted at me to be extremely careful, and he looked nervous, whatever that means. As I'm walking towards the back of the property, which is a couple hundred feet. I approached a tree. I stand behind the tree so that way my front side is facing my brother and my dad so I could hide behind the tree as I unzip my pants and relieve myself. I started to get a really funny feeling, but I just ignored it and continued taking care of business. Afterwards, I was walking back and for some reason, I just thought to myself to turn around and look into the woods. Well, I did 
and I saw two glowing yellow eyes staring at me high into the trees. Something was up in the trees watching me, watching us. I couldn't see it since it was practically almost dark at this point, and the sun was just barely in the sky. Whatever it was though, it certainly glowed and I ran back to the house with fear and panic. My dad from a few hundred feet away sees me running as fast as I can, and as soon as I catch up to him, he looks even more panicked than when I left. Before he even says anything, I immediately tell him and my brother that there's something watching us up in the trees near the back side of the property. My dad, not even saying a word, just sits down in his chair, and there's silence for a few moments. He still had the firework in his hand that he was going to light, but we just sat there for a few moments. He finally broke the silence and said this, Boys, listen to me very carefully. It is crucial that you do not ever, for whatever reason, go to that back side of the property. Do you understand me? I've never seen him so stern and so serious before in my life. Even the times that we've messed up and done things as kids has he never talked to us this way. There was a sense of fear and anger in his voice. He said that let's finish off lighting a couple of these fireworks and go inside for the night. I wasn't going to argue with him. I was beginning to feel uncomfortable after everything. My younger brother just sat there in silence, not saying a word. After a couple more fireworks, we ended up going inside for the night, cutting things a little short. After that night, we went back to town and I didn't see my father again until October. When I learned that he had moved out of the property and into an apartment because there was some issues going on with the property that he never talked about. I want to know what he knew. What did he see? What did he experience? He clearly knew something was back there and kept us from it out of our safety. I don't ever want to imagine if anything back there crept up to the house and tried to get in. I'll never know now, but if my dad was alive, I would sure love to ask him. I drive a truck for a living, and I'm actually quite well known in my business. Some of my superiors know about this, and I'd prefer that I keep anonymous as much as possible. Like I said, I drive a truck for a living and have been doing it for quite some time. Truck driving is an interesting occupation to say the least. Long drives, not a lot of interaction, hell, it gives you a lot of time for audiobooks, music, and time to just sit and think. But like any other job, things can get boring. The pay has been really good for me, and I always love driving, so it's something I've kept doing. I've had some bizarre things happen to me out on the road, mainly being at truck stops, actually. You get all sorts of weirdos, prostitutes, freaks, you name it. However, the weirdest thing happened to me when I was driving a route from San Francisco to South Carolina. During this route, I was actually making a pit stop in one of the upper Midwest states, and so this event happened to me as I was driving in Wyoming. This was years and years ago. I don't remember which highway or interstate I was on in Wyoming, but I remember it was late at night. It wasn't quite time to settle in for the night, so I was doing my usual driving. I remember the road I was driving was actually only two lanes, and there was a bunch of woods on both sides. There wasn't a whole lot of traffic out on the road, that much I do remember. I came across a slight bend in the road, and then it lengthened out. As I'm driving, my headlights hit something in the distance. A dead deer in the middle of the road. Now, that's not uncommon out here, to be honest. But I noticed something else as I got a little closer. Something really big was eating on it. This thing was much bigger than the deer, and so I started to freak out that it was a big grizzly bear eating this thing. I started honking my horn and beginning to slow down. This thing was hundreds of feet away, but if I had to stop due to a bear, you better damn well bet I was going to start slowing the hell down way before I ever got even close. I was doing about 50, and I'm slowing way down and slowly approaching this dead deer and the animal that was eating it. From the ways I was away, all I could see was a big mass of black hair. I couldn't make out what it was exactly. I got close enough that this thing turned and faced me, and then stood up on two legs. It looked like a big, hairy, black wolf. It was standing on two legs and facing me. It looked like it was awkwardly standing, like it was forcing its body to hold itself up. 
I said to myself, what the fuck is that? Before I could reach a full stop, this thing literally darted to the side of the road in darkness and disappeared. I was probably down to about 15 to 20 miles an hour when this happened and maybe about 50 feet away, if I had to guess. I kind of glided there on the road for a second, rubbing my eyes, convincing myself I was just really, really tired and I was hallucinating. I picked up my speed, drove around the dead deer and kept going. I was unnerved by what I saw. I've never seen an animal like that in my life. It looked like a werewolf if they really did exist. I quickly extinguished those silly thoughts out of my head and continued my way on my route. About 30 or so minutes later, I'd been noticing my load feeling weird, like it had extra weight to it or it started to pull itself one way or another on the road. I can't quite describe the feeling. It was so odd. I thought I probably damaged my hitch or possibly popped a tire when I partially ran over that dead deer and it also happened to be a five point buck. And so I figured one of the horns maybe tore a tire or something. There was a truck stop just a couple of miles away, lucky for me. So right before I ended up pulling into it, I felt the weight of my trailer shift again. This time it felt more normal and was lighter. Something's going on with my load and I know I needed to get to a place where I could stop and look. When I finally reached the truck stop, I got some glares from fellow truckers that were outside of their trucks with coffee, which was only maybe three since it was super early in the morning. I got out of my truck and my jaw dropped at what had happened to my load. Three of the tires were not only popped, they were shredded. They looked like somebody attacked them with a sword and sliced them up. There were giant tear marks all over the trailer and much of the wiring for the lights on the hitch were not only torn, they were missing. They had somehow been torn out entirely. My trailer was in significant damage. I had no idea what happened and there's no way this could have happened from just partially running over a dead buck. I called my supervisor immediately and explained the situation. I ended up having to take an emergency vehicle somewhere else and they came and took care of the truck. I'm not sure whatever came of the truck and the load, but that's my story for you. Maybe the wolf creature did it. I don't know. I've always been into living out in the countryside, but never quite knew when it was going to happen with my current job. So I ended up being in the right financial situation after getting a new job in a different part of town to be able to finally find a beautiful place in the country and call it my own. I had looked all around and ended up scoring a pretty good deal on a pretty cheap piece of property that not only had acreage, but a nice good sized house with a little extra few bonuses. Let me explain this property for you a little bit better. You go up this long driveway, about 500 yards, all gravel. Both sides of this driveway is just alfalfa fields, and then past those fields is woodline and forest on both sides. Once you get up to the property, the house is surrounded by a wraparound driveway that's also all gravel. All around this wraparound driveway is open pastures with occasional trees here and there, but it's pretty open Past the open fields that were once used to have livestock like horses in them is a lot more woods and it eventually dips down into a canyon with a creek. We got a lot of beautiful scenery out here. The house itself though needs some cosmetic work as a lot of the updates haven't been worked on it since the 80s. It's an older, larger farmhouse built in the early 1900s. It features an amazing open living room with a huge stone fireplace. For the minor updates it really needed, honestly it was totally livable, nothing major needed updating to live in. This was a steal of a deal. I remember being there with the broker the first time I checked the property out. He walked around and shown me all the stuff there was. This place even had a really nice two car garage shop across from the house, a chicken coop next to that, and a barn further down the field that I had access to. Near the front of the house was a woodshed and another building what looked to be like an old homestead. Everything looked great, and when I asked the broker why all this property was so dang cheap, he just told me that they've been having problems keeping tenants in here for some reason, and that maybe a lower rent will help. I was confused by this. How on earth could they have a hard time keeping people here? 
You bet I signed that contract as fast as I could. And before you knew it, I had the keys in my hand and it was move-in day. An important detail I should share with you. This is one of the things I love most about my property now. There are so many deer, lots of deer. Mostly all does though. I've only actually ever seen just one buck. But still, they hang out in the fields and they come up to the house sometimes. I see them maybe every day. It wasn't even more than maybe a couple weeks of living here and I started to notice weird things going on. The first is that the deer started disappearing. Not only did they just stop coming around the property, but I noticed initially they would travel in larger groups, but I kept seeing over time the groups getting smaller. There wasn't several large groups of deer that I saw, just one main large group of does. It looked like it was getting thinned out. During the day, working on the house outside painting, I felt like I was being watched and I could never fully pinpoint where it was coming from. I would hear weird banging and clanging noises at night from my woodshed and homestead. I know we got critters out here like badgers, coyotes, skunks, coons, and deer, but these were loud, like some large animal was banging around at them. I initially ignored it until just a few weeks ago, I began seeing shadows running around my property and I've seen this wolf face pop up in my window multiple times, staring at me, watching me. I know we don't have wolves out here. I don't know what it is I'm dealing with. There's some sort of animal living here with me and I don't know what to do if it becomes aggressive. I still love my property and this thing must be living around here, eating the deer. I've only seen this animal's face a couple of times, but I'm not scared. I'm not going to be outrun from my house by some animal. I'll gladly share my land with a predator if that's the case. Just as long as it stays away from me and doesn't hurt me, we can live in peace together. Oh, and I've been living here about six months now, dealing with this situation. It's strange, and I'm living with this weird wolf thing on my property. I guess we'll just have to get along for now. I want to share an experience I had last summer. I think it should be shared, documented, and taken note of. I did send it to Paranormal Roundtable a couple months back ago, but I haven't heard much back. Last summer, while on vacation, I had a couple strange things happen to me one night. I had gone to a music festival on the west coast of Canada, about an hour drive east of Vancouver. I had traveled from Vancouver Island to get there. After the festival was over, I decided to stay on the mainland and check out some areas and parks and do some camping as I rarely get off the island. I ended up getting lost in my car and heat stroked and finally found a campground. It wasn't a great campground. It was mostly intended as an RV resort type of park, but I didn't care. It was up the road from this haunted house attraction, like one of those ones that are open on Halloween. The attraction looked like a storefront. It didn't have a sign or anything. I thought it was the office where I had to register to camp. There was a sign on the street right by it that said camping. When I got out of my car, I got creeped out. And that was when I realized it wasn't the office reception for the campground, but a closed down haunted house attraction. There was a campsite behind it. I thought about staying there, but my instinct said no. So I go in my car, drive down the road and found a better campsite up the road. I was so tired I didn't even set up my tent, but slept under the stars in my air mattress. The next night I was hanging out with a family that was camped next to where I had set up my tent. They had a propane fireplace, campfire ban in effect, so I was enjoying their fire. I had to go buy smokes, and there was a store about 10 minute walking distance up the road. It must have been about 10.30 p.m. Being from the city, the thought hadn't crossed my mind to go to the store before it closed. I assumed because it was a gas station, it would be 24 hours. I also thought nothing of being a female out walking in the night in the country. As soon as I got to the road from the property of the camp park, I felt a little bit at ease. It was dark as hell, but I'm not afraid of the dark. There were a bunch of big rig trucks lined down the road. The road was adjacent to a major highway, so they likely park for the night. Both sides. It made me nervous, but I continued. The store was so close it wouldn't take long, I rationalized in my mind. I couldn't see the store because there was a slight curve down the road, so it wasn't as quite a straight shot as I would have liked. 
As I walked past the haunted attraction, there was a pair of bright, round, yellowy, amber eyes. At first, I thought it was an animal, maybe a coyote because of how low they were to the ground, like a foot above the ground. We don't have coyotes on the island, so I'm not super familiar to their traits. I stopped and I shined my flashlight at it from the road. There was a parking lot between the house and the road. I was hoping to see what it was or maybe catch some sort of an eye movement, but my light didn't really do much. I couldn't see what it was and the eyes did not flinch when I shined my flashlight right at it. They just stared at me, so I kept moving. I was almost at the store. From my experience, when you shine light at an animal, usually you get an eye movement or a flick. That did not happen. That was concerning. I was freaked out now, but determined to get my smokes and get back to camp. Got to the store and it was closed. I needed a smoke at this point as I was scared from what I had encountered. There was a dude, who's a truck driver I assume, standing in front of the store talking on his headset, so I wasn't completely alone, but he did give me a little comfort. I knew I had passed another store back down the road when I drove in the day before, so I kept on walking, hoping to get some smokes there. I also did not want to turn around and go back past the eyes, even though I would eventually have to go that way to get back to camp. So I kept walking, really scared, pitch black, nothing around me except trucks, tall bush to one side of me. I am walking in the middle of the road as there are bushes to one side. I start hearing things move in the bushes and start thinking about wild animals, and I am freaked out, but addiction is a funny thing. Something in my head told me to turn around, but I did not listen to that voice. Then the bush opens up into the fields, corn fields. I keep walking and I could hear rustling. I feel like I'm being watched now. Sounds like animals or bird calls. I look through the corn and I see something shadowy and moving. I thought I saw a tall figure. Something tells me to go back now in my head, so I do. I think to myself, fuck the smokes, I will fucking quit. I'm hearing sounds all around me. I start to feel really tired. I'm finding it hard to walk, like I am walking through mud or fast flowing water. I'm trying to walk as fast as I can, but I feel like I'm being pulled back. I feel fear and start to panic, so I put my music on my phone, gangster trappy stuff just so I have a focal point and something to concentrate on and so I don't keep feeding the fear rising up in my mind. I continue to walk down the road, zigzagging from side to side. Out of the open field area, back to the part with the bush and trees, zigzagging away from all the parked trucks just so I don't get snatched. I pass the store and then the haunted house. The glowing eyes are not there. I make my way back to the property of the RV park. I am fighting to keep walking. I feel like something is pulling me back. Gravity is so heavy. Once I turn up to the road to the get back to camp, the heaviness lifts. I go back to my neighbor's fire. They shut it down about a half an hour later. I'm not ready to go to sleep and I really want to smoke. I think I will wander on the site and try to find someone to bum a smoke from. I have calmed down by now. As I am wondering, I thought I saw something move up a lane I was about to go down. I wasn't sure, but it was enough to make me go back to my tent. I sat outside my tent, having a beer, and smoking a doobie, and as I was scanning my surroundings, I see a dog staring at me from in front of the RV of my neighbor's campsite. At first, I had a moment of panic, as I am terrified of dogs. I've been bitten a couple of times on different occasions. Then I see this isn't a normal dog. It is huge. I couldn't see its body because it is obscured by shadow from the hedge that is separating the RV sites. It had to be eight or nine feet tall. All I can see is its head and shoulders rising from the shadows cast across the RV from the hedge. It is like a Doberman in that it has the slender Batman type of head that a Doberman has large ears that point straight up. It is standing there not moving but looking right at me. I couldn't see its eyes. I couldn't make out much detail because it was in the shadows of a hedge, except its head and shoulders stuck out above the shadow, right in front of the RV, and it came pretty close to the top of the RV. It was staring right at me. I told it to stay there, do not come over here. I called in my guides and asked for their protection. I said if it had a message for me, that it had to talk to my guides and it did not have my permission to come near me. At that, it started moving in a strange way. 
It stayed in the same spot, but it... I don't know how to describe what it did. It looked like it was fading in and out, like the mass of it was fading in and out. The only way I can describe it, like it stayed in the same spot and moved like one of those neat wind chimes. If you look at kinetic wind chimes on YouTube, that is the only comparison that I can give you that sort of explains what it did. It looked like it was vibrating and it was making a noise too, like a low hissing wind sound. I freaked out at this as I thought it was getting ready to attack me. Then it was gone. I can't be sure how. I think I glanced to the side for an escape route and looked back and it was gone. I used my joint and smudged my area. I made a protective circle where my tent was and asked my guides to bless and protect it and went inside. Every time I got up to pee in the night, I was so afraid. I literally peed beside my tent. The area I was in is very close to the Washington state border and Mount Baker. I do wonder what would have happened had I not fought to stay awake and keep moving forward when I was walking down that road. There are so many missing people in BC, and it just makes me wonder what could have been my fate had I not said, not today, motherfucker. Also, one other point of interest was that I was dressed up in Kigurumi. A Kigurumi is an animal onesie for adults. Like kids, one-piece pajamas. I had worn mine that night, as it was a bit cooler than it had been all week that night. I had that in a bunch of other costumes for the music festival. I was dressed like a leopard, complete with a hoodie that had ears and a tail. Food for thought. I had become obsessed with listening to other people's dogman encounters since this happened. I was researching Anubis and Hellhounds and found the topic of dogmen. I had heard of it maybe once before, but never paid attention to the subject. I wanted to report what I saw because I haven't heard much from Canada, especially the West Coast. The area that I was in is a hot spot for Sasquatch activity and has been for hundreds of years. I just wanted to share my story. Thanks for listening.